Well, what do you do if you're Moroni and you're the last guy in your culture, in your nation, who's living as a, as a uh, socio-political group, the Nephites? He's, he's the last one of that, of that group. Here's what you do. Verse 3, unto three shall they be shown by the power of God, wherefore they shall know of a surety that these things are true. There are going to be three who get a sure witness, they are true testifiers that this is a true record. Look at verse 4, and in the mouth of three witnesses shall these things be established, and the testimony of three, and this work in the which shall be shown forth the power of God and also his word. It's here where Joseph gets this idea of, I get to show the record, the, the, these plates, to three special witnesses who can join with my testimony that this is an authentic book, an authentic record from antiquity, and they're going to be able to bear testimony to the world that it is true and it's legally binding on all of us from God. It's kind of neat. Well, Moroni doesn't end there. Moroni takes it one step further. I love this. Look what he did. He calls – he basically is saying to Joseph, you're now authorized to get three witnesses, and we know those to be uh, Oliver Cowdery, David Whitmer, and Martin Harris. But then look at what he does with his own three witnesses. And also his word, of which the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost bear record, and this shall stand as a testimony against the world at the last day. Moroni basically looking around saying, I got nobody to deliver this record to you. Joseph, you're going to be able to get three witnesses. God's going to reveal things to them. They're going to stand as witnesses. But I'm calling on my three witnesses as I deliver up these plates that this is an authentic, real record, and my three witnesses are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's true. And if you doubt me, can you picture Moroni saying this? verse uh, 5, and if it so be that they repent and come unto the Father in the name of Jesus, they shall be received into the kingdom of heaven. And now, if I have no authority for these things, judge ye, for ye shall know that I have authority when ye shall see me, and we shall stand before God at the last day. Amen. I love that. How many books of Scripture, or any book for that matter, do you have where a real person reaches up from the page, grabs you by the shirt front, pulls you in, looks you in the eye, and says, you're accountable for this. I'm bearing witness. I've got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You've got other witnesses from the earth, and we're going to stand at the last day. I'm going to look at you. You're going to know that I had authority for these things. I love that. I love Moroni reaching down through the quarter of time and grabbing me, saying, Tyler, this book is true. There are so many people in, in the history of this story who put their life, infused their, their life and their teachings, consecrated efforts into you getting this record. Why is it so important that we know this is true? Because it helps us figure out how to break through the, the mists of darkness and those clouds and those struggles that seem to separate us from the presence of God or to make it so that he's cloaked or veiled, so that we can slowly, line upon line, precept upon precept, work our way through life to come unto him and come to know him as our Savior and our Redeemer, the one who was sent to bring us home to the arms of our loving heavenly parents. I know he lives. I know he loves you. And we leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.